us Indians always stick together. It was good for sound. <laughs> Yo, are you with me? Are you against me? Or you missed a thousand pound reward. It was wham, bam, right on the money. was a yep. kind of a seminal figure in Australia's bush ranging history, and that's the basic reason why I wanted to make the picture. And they refer to him as Mad Dog because he was humiliating the wealthy squatters in the Riverina area, and they started pressurizing the press to put this man down, and uh, that's how history was written. And basically, the story is very simple. It's a, it's a story about someone who was uh, pushed about and beaten down but who um, wasn't broken down and decided to rebel. Bob! Can you spread them out a bit more, mate? Chris, if you could get all the Chinese extras onto the other side of the bridge, and I'll direct you where to put them from there. Yes, some of those that are sitting on the side there, mate. After I'd done quite a bit of reading on the bushrangers, I discovered that Morgan was regarded really as the outlaw's outlaw. Thirty years after he was dead, Ned Kelly used to ride into battle shouting hurrah for Dan Morgan, long live Dan Morgan. Testing! Bob, get someone digging, see where that guy is there. Get someone digging around there. Mm -hmm. Mine. Are there plenty of women down there, mate? Everyone stand by, please. Yep. Ready? Rolling? You rolling? Rolling. 232A, take one. Action on the gold field. Up there. Up there. Up there. Up there. Up there. One thing that you have to remember about the period that Mad Dog Morgan is set in is that Australia didn't exist as such. It was really a group of British colonies. So all the Australian actors had to try and lose their Australian accents. The police across the river border are totally and completely incompetent. There were three men who would stop at nothing to catch Mad Dog Morgan. If Morgan crosses the river, he will not last 24 hours in Victoria. He will be relentlessly and mercilessly cut down. Thus, the boil will be expunged and obliterated. As senior officer here, I assume command of this situation. There are two points I would like to stress, which you will relay to all the armed civilians. Firstly, we will take Morgan alive. Secondly, if there is a need to open fire, care will be taken to aim at his limbs. M, it's the malefactor. And on this island, we brand you, so you'll never forget for the rest of your life what you are. David Gopalil plays Morgan's Aboriginal accomplice who taught Morgan how to survive in the bush. Dennis Hopper is Mad Dog Morgan. I'm just going to tell you one thing. I'll never believe your father was white. <laughs> Dennis is a method actor, and a real method actor. The book. Well, see this. Well, the magic cigarette. 
That means that go, he totally immerses himself, and, uh, subjugates his whole personality to the part that he's playing. A good beer down here in Australia. Well, that but creates problems because, <laughs> you know, he never stops living the part. Are we like, uh, so just trivial things like him bailing up people in the Hilton Hotel in Sydney and Melbourne. <laughs> During the whole shooting period, he continually spoke in an Irish accent. I think Dennis also fits into the kind of rebel image because his previous big success, Easy Rider, was a modern version of Mad Dog, if you like. Easy Rider here. <laughs> Quiet, please. Action. From a director's point of view, it's uh, a coordinating problem. You have to coordinate all the practical difficulties, the transport, the weather, the camera setups. You have to coordinate all that with the emotional and uh, psychological feelings of the actors. So there's this feeling of tension which builds up before each take because everyone's running around doing their bit. Dennis is just going to go for you. I'm going to say, you're lying, you bloody bastard. You watch what you're doing, you bloody bastard, but I'm going to go for you. Yeah. Mm. I am. Team jumping bastard. You watch what you're doing, you bloody bastard. What are you, dumb face? Some yellow ass chink loving you. Don't ever hold me. Don't ever hold me when I'm in a fight. That's the way you get hurt. I know you mean well. What's that bloody bastard's name? Wendland. Wendland. Jesus, you've got an Irish temper. I like that little bit of nick in me. Cut. Look, um, Jerry is calling me and that man will stop me. Covering you in the back. Martin and the other guy. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Print that. Thank you. Check the gate. Howdy. Rope him up. Oh, cut. No good. Airplane. No good for sound. Airplane's gone. Okay. It's good for sound. Roll him. Rolling speed. Buzzer. Clap forward. Take six. Bang. Clank. Powder puff. Action. <laughs> Well, I think it's probably physically harder. Just because of, I mean, just because of the part I'm playing. Huh? I've never been on a thoroughbred racehorse, for example. Or ridden an English saddle. And, uh, they take you for a spin. <laughs> Morgan, um... <coughs> I think he was. I think he was insane. I think he realized he was insane at the end of the film. I, uh, at the end of his life, actually, actually, he was alive. Uh, but I, I, I think that he was driven uh, insane by his society. I could look like this man Lincoln. I like the way he looks. I could look like him. You see. And uh, he did hang out with the aberrationaries. Different than Ned Kelly, he worked alone, except for this telegraph service, which were aberrationaries. And he was, he was very into Lincoln, and he was into the Civil War at the same time. I don't think of him, I, well, actually, I, I don't see any difference between being here and being in, in, uh, in the West. <laughs>